Okay. Well, thank you. It was very great. I didn't feel like it was I was in Tokyo, but actually it's happening on the 10th floor of this building. Um, now we are moving on to Asia. Uh, so we have three guests from Hong Kong, Korea, and Taiwan. Uh, can, we, can we call Tim Wong from Taiwan, Cesar Harada in Hong Kong, and Hugh Choi in Korea? Can you guys hear me? Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hey, good to see you. Congratulations, 10th anniversary. Thank you. Congratulations to, to us, right? <laughs> And I don't see uh, Cesar and Tim. Are they on? Hi. Okay, great. Hi. 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 Hello. <laughs> okay, so let me introduce briefly about three of them. Uh, so first, uh, Q. He is based in Seoul. He's a technology uh, strategist and innovation catalyst. Uh, he's a co-founder of Penn Asia Network. And he's also founder and CEO of LifeScare Future Designs. And he, of course, uh, leads the uh, CIFCAST in Korea. And Tim Wan, he's the co founder of Lovework and Fab Cafe in both Hong Kong and Taiwan. And he's an architect. And Cesar is in Hong Kong and he's a director of Maker Bay, it's a makerspace. And he also teaches design and architecture at. Um, University of Hong Kong, and he also runs a uh, ocean robotics company. So welcome. And yeah, I want to I want to hear from each of you your, you know, more about yourself and how you got involved with SafeCast. Uh, who should I start? Start with Hugh, maybe? All right. Um... Anyhow, just, you know, just 10th anniversary, I, I don't believe because it, it, it in 2011, you know, you guys have a, you know, big, you know, tragedy, but you actually, you know, collaborate and overcome, right? <laughs> and now, you know, we improve the world better. So um, I was the uh, uh, in same situation because in Korea, um, earthquake is quite rare. So we don't have, you know, much earthquake. So that's why nobody actually worry about earthquake. But um, in 2014, probably some someone uh, know that we have a very big tragedy. It, 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 we have a big ferry, Sewol ferry. Uh, it's this big, you know, boat. Actually, there are many people uh, on that boat, and then because of you know our um, what what I say, lack of safety mines, Sewol uh, ferry actually you know sunk in the water and uh, over 300 people died, mostly actually uh, high school students. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was so, you know, um, prostrated because, you know, even I'm, I'm doing, you know, innovation. I'm, I'm, my vision is that make a world better uh, using technology and innovation. But at the time I, I, I couldn't do anything because in front of my, me, uh, there is TV and then I saw the news in the morning and then over three or four hours, actually, you know, the boat is slowly sink into the water. And then from my eyes, everybody died. So um, at the time I uh, prostrated, uh, how, to, how to, you know, make that, you know, better. So um, uh, that is my um, motivation to, you know, the pay more attention to the safety and something about you know how to how to you know uh, improve our, our you know society and then 2016 um actually the, we have a strong earthquake in in southern korea it, it, it twice so uh, i was surprised because it's never never you know happened before like that it's just so big because of more than 6.5 or something degree so um I, I i felt actually you know i'm i even though i'm in i was in seoul but i felt because it is it, 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 quite you know strong earthquake so at the time i realized um what what if the more earthquake could come to korea mm -hmm. <laughs> because you know the 2014, we I, I couldn't do anything because you know we don't know anything about you know accident you know tragedy about Paris, so I would like to do something because you know what if nuclear plant cracked mm -hmm. because of earthquake? What if 
um, someone someone use you know bad part of nuclear plant, so it is you know out of order. It could be ha- it could be you know uh, make a big tragedy. So uh, I uh, because you know I was the I'm the uh, the board member of the Creative Commons of Korea. So Creative Commons of Korea is like uh, you know open data and commons you know the movement uh, the organ- uh, organization. So I was aware of the safe case at the time. So I contact Peter. Hey Peter. I, I need your help because you know I would like to you know bring you know safe case into Korea because um I would like to get I would like to have a data uh, because you know government also they have a possibility to measure nuclear radiation but um, I don't believe because they can if, if there is any accident and nuclear plant probably government can tweak or government can conceal government can you know hide their information whatever then we got same you know situation. In, in like you know 2014, so uh, please help me. So Peter and Joe actually came to Korea several times, and then brought uh, safe case of big eye nanos and kids, and we gather together and solder together, <laughs> and then bring people, and then uh, made a several you know big eye nano, and then we measure, try to measure, and you know upload to the uh, uh, safe case to you know open map whatever. So. That was my, you know, the first time how to how to you know connect with a safe cast, you know, with Peter, Joe, and Amy, and other you know colleagues here. So um, anyhow, just you know, um, more more uh, one, one more thing that you know, chair would like to share is that um, safe cast is, is is not any everything, right? Because you know, even at the time um, in Korea, people worry about not you know nuclear radiation people worry about uh our quality because you know we are close by you know china so every spring we got very you know yellow dust from china and also we have a lot of charcoal power plants and many many diesel powered engine cars so um the air quality is quite poor bad so um, many people worry worry about concern about you know air quality but non-nuclear radiation so people ask me why you measure radiation Instead of you know air quality, so mm-hmm. that is sort of you know um, challenge for me though. Um, I, I think uh, it's the right time because you know, we we you know come came to the tenth anniversary, so right time to bring everything into the same table, and then we can you know improve, we can collaborate together. Mm-hmm. So that is my you know safe case experience. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, let's move on to Tim. Can you? Hi. Yeah, tell me about how you got started getting involved with SafeCast and mm. about yourself. Okay, yeah, so um, I get involved with um, with SafeCast, obviously it's through LoveWork. So I met with uh, Peter and Joe and Ashley in 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and from that point on, because actually the, the issues of nuclear was also obviously is also, it's a, it's a sensitive issue in Taiwan. And uh, and then if you go to um, the cafe in in, in in Taiwan, you you see actually a flag of like anti nuclear, mm-hmm. yeah. Because um, still, I think <clears throat> has been a kind of um, energy um, is a sensitive subject in Taiwan. And also, the other thing is actually there were at the time there were still <clears throat> talks about uh, 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 um, uh, building a new nuclear power plant. In Taiwan, so obviously uh, it's it's kind of a NIMBY issue. So nobody wants to 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 um, have a nuclear power plant, but at the same time, uh, uh, there seems like uh, there's nothing that citizen can do proactively, mm-hmm. other than protesting. Mm-hmm. So so I think this is actually this is one of the key uh, motivation for me to. Uh, promote SafeCast in a way that <clears throat> it is a uh, the citizen science, citizen science as an empowerment. Mm-hmm. So instead of just saying no, so it, it's more important to understand what are what we can actually do and actually not just leaving to the experts. Mm-hmm. So so from 2013, I started basically just getting to uh, Bigagi Kids and building it and bringing it to Taiwan. Also sharing it with my friends and uh, uh, designers and also professors in universities. So, and gradually, and then we, <clears throat> uh, I think in 2015, we, we attended the, the Maker Fair in Taipei and also asking Joe and, and Peter to come and join and also 
helping helping to promote. And also the other thing is actually we host different types of workshops to um, educate uh, or, or in some sense uh, kind of broadcast or getting people that are interested in this topic to engage. Mm -hmm. um, so previously we started with the Bigaigi, which is actually the bento box yep. uh, model. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, and 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 then this is the part. This is the one that we take it outside, and then also we went out basically all over Taiwan to to get measurements. Um, and also we actually lent it to uh, uh, students in universities mm -hmm. and people that are actually going cycling around Taiwan to to just carry it with them. And then and gradually, actually, um, I think in two thousand end of two thousand sixteen and beginning of seventeen, we start using the K Gaigi. The K Gaigi, which is uh, uh, the 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 kit where we're um, helping yep. to um, uh, basically just to let people know and quickly prototype how you can measure radiations mm -hmm. in that sense. So that was very useful when we talk with uh, uh, high school students and mm -hmm. also having more programs that we can have larger amount of kit where where we can distribute and also to share with uh, to educate. Uh, the types of uh, prototyping process and then what does it mean to use certain science mm. to be able to gather data and be proactive about uh, how we can protect the environment. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, Tim, you're originally from Hong Kong, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And so yeah. I guess you can compare like the difference between the people in Taiwan and Hong Kong, how they approach uh, to this kind of uh, movements. Can you tell mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I think obviously, I think the in terms of sensibility wise, I think well, it is uh, the sensibility wise. I, I think like the, in in Taiwan, people are uh, in some sense are can assimilate mm. to what's what's the hap what what's the situation in Japan. And in fact, actually today there's a there's a huge uh, festival to kind of uh, commemorate. The, mm. the, uh, the 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 incidents the disaster, but at the same time, actually, it's also a celebrations between uh, Japan and Taiwan in terms of the supports. Yeah, so it's just happening right outside in Huasan. Mm. Yes, and also there's exhibitions about the 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 in, in what happened in Fukushima as well. Mm. Yes, uh, but in in comparison, I think the. Uh, um, the types of sense awareness and also, um, also I think one of the key points is actually it's not just safe cats, but also the government and and also there's another um, uh, organizations, um, a grassroots organization called G Zero V in Taiwan mm -hmm. that are uh, dedicated of uh, basically a, a group of, of of programmers and on volunteers actually to gather um, public data. Mm -hmm. And also, especially now with the new digital prime minister, uh, which get right. kind of famous in Taiwan, in Japan now as well, uh, mm -hmm. that that really uh, uh, pushing for for like trusting citizen, also mm -hmm. using open open data and mm -hmm. how that can influence the government policies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can. Japanese people can learn a lot from you know different Asian countries. Um, like Taiwan is you know being talked about a lot in the media now. Mm, 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 yeah, mm. so it's great. And maybe Cesar, you can also uh, talk about your uh, situation in Hong Kong and also yourself and how you started getting involved with Safecast. Sure. Um, is that okay if I, I prepare some visual? Is it okay to share my screen? Yes. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll put the timers out to make sure I fit in the 10 minutes. Um, so actually, the, the way I met with Safecast, uh, origin is because so I'm half Japanese. My mom is French, my father is Japanese from Niigata. And uh, a few months after the uh, Afukushima accident happened, uh, actually, one of my younger cousins in Niigata got diagnosed for testicular cancer. Uh, and he didn't have a child. And so I was a little bit frustrated that at the same time I was hearing that the Japanese government was not you know, disclosing necessarily all the original information. And so I was very, very admirative of SafeCast. And so I reached out to them because I wanted to go by myself to measure radioactivity uh, next to my family home in Japan to actually see what radioactivity is like there. 
Um, so I, pre I prepare some visual to show you how first I learned with SafeCast, how I've been working to build the citizen science community in Hong Kong and how we are now growing in ASEAN. So I'll be after the accident, I am a nobody. <laughs> I'm, a, a, I'm an environmental activist from France and I reached out to SafeCast, but they already sold out all, all the big IG counter. Mm -hmm. And so I reached out to other environmental group, uh, Greenpeace and the National Atmospheric Agency were very kind to lend me some sensor, but the SafeCast couldn't lend me the sensor. So mm -hmm. I, me I meet uh, Kaline, who was very kind to teach me how to use the Geiger counter um, correctly. So it's calibrated the same way so that I could contribute my data point to SafeCast. So my first data point to SafeCast were actually manually collected with a dosimeter and uh, like a very old school, um, basically manually by hand, I would enter, I want, I'm on my bicycle and I cycle from Tokyo all the way to Fukushima. And um, I seen very th many things that I was very shocked about. And so I was reporting to SafeCast, even though I was not really like officially a SafeCast member because I was not using the proper SafeCast um, device. Mm -hmm. uh, one year later, I organized a second expedition. And this time I was very lucky, SafeCast, uh, they see that I'm very committed. So they were very kind with me and Joe drove uh, me and Gabriel Levin all the way from Tokyo, all the way to Fukushima in the in the area, and then all the way down back to Kyoto. <laughs> so he was incredibly uh, uh, gentle. And, and then we test a new device to measure radioactivity at the bottom of the sea. We found that measured radioactivity in the sea is very difficult because water mm -hmm. is a radioactivity insolent. And so we tried to deploy an autonomous sailing robot to measure radioactivity in the bottom of the sea, but it didn't work very well. And so the third time I went, uh, this time I was as a secondary school teacher because I was working as a secondary school teacher. So with my students, we developed a whole strategy around measuring radioactivity at the bottom of the sea. But this time we think, is there a way that we could measure radioactivity at the bottom of the sea? And with my students, they are very young, they're aged from seven to 11 years old. We develop a new type of instrument which could measure the activity from the surface sediment. On the left is the Ekman grab, which is the traditional way of measuring uh, sediment. You catch the sediment and then you bring it to the lab. Uh, but we wanted to catch the recent, very recent sediment. So we invented a new type of machine, which only collect the surface sediment, the, the fresh recent one. Otherwise we make an average of radioactivity measurement for the last hundred years, which is not very helpful. So we developed these uh, instruments and then we go and try to measure it first ourselves in the Fukushima area. We went to work with the CNRS and Professor Evrach, who is a, a, a sediment scientist who used radioactivity as a tracer. And then we wanted to work with the local fishermen. So we create this pamphlet and we tried to reach out to the local Japanese fishermen. And eventually we were very lucky. Uh, we were inspired by the work of Umi Labo, who is a local uh, nonprofit doing that. And we managed to uh, get on a fishing boat and the sail just very, very close, 1.5 kilometers away from nuclear power plant and uh, collect the sediment with the fishermen. And uh, we found that our instruments, we are able to invent the instrument, but the fishermen are much better than us to use our instrument because they have professional fishermen so they can pull and they collect the sediments. And so developing this relationship and methodology, we realized that the fishermen know that it's, you know, there's radioactivity just out there, uh, but they are actually encouraged to go fish. So they not really have a critical opinion about it. What they're trying to do is really to feed their family. And I totally, totally respect that. But you can see the nuclear power plant is just there and they're fishing without protection. Or So we collected the sediments um, and then we brought them back to France to try them in the, uh, in the laboratory of nuclear safety in the very precise um, machine. And then we distributed back the uh, sediments, radioactivity to all the fishermen that, that, we, that we met uh, along the coastline. So, so that's the first part is learning with SafeCast. So after I came back from Fukushima, I came back to Hong Kong and we built a makerspace. So very similar to Fab Cafe. Uh, and then we teach the people in Hong Kong how to map radioactivity. We also did workshops in Macau. So this is University of Macau. And we do a lot of things which are inspired from this learning from SafeCast. So for example, we also teach people about mapping biodiversity. And we work with the um, genetic um, company to help us to map biodiversity in Hong Kong. I teach my students to map plastic pollution in the sea with new technology. Uh, we work with WWF to track the plastic in the sea using similar technique like SafeCast. Um, this is for WWF, which, which is also like the first biomorphic ocean drifter. Uh, and then we open in six new locations. So we have been teaching citizen science and open mini maker spaces in six locations in the poorest area of Hong Kong. 
And we also organized the first citizen science fair in Hong Kong. So we, we try to invite all the people who are working in citizen science in Hong Kong, may they be about you know, pollution or biodiversity or anything else. So um, the project that we're doing right now that is the most active is mapping coral reef. So now what we're doing is we're really leveraging the power of citizen science to deploy robots and take thousands of pictures of coral in the sea and get volunteers to help us to classify coral to make a map of biodiversity because corals are dying very, very fast. And so I do this now at the University of Hong Kong. And the newest project we're doing at the University of Hong Kong is that we are building floating marine lab. Think about it as a, almost like a citizen science, citizen science laboratory where you would measure you know, air quality, but also water quality and biodiversity into one space. So that's what we're trying to build. Yesterday, uh, we went to meet with a local fisherman and understand their you know, business model also. And they have 5,000 floating farms in Hong Kong, between Hong Kong and Shenzhen in deep bay. So there's a lot of space actually to clean the water and clean the air in a very, very large area at very large scale. So we're trying to work with them. This is the prototype that we want to, to build with them. Uh, this is sort of like more poetic vision of it. And very lastly, uh, I'd like to talk about their effort in ASEAN. Two years ago, we were commissioned by the uh, Cambodian uh, Ministry of Telecommunication to help them to think about implementation technology to modernize their agricultural sector. And so we run an incubator to uh, make agriculture sector more uh, sustainable, both in the way they exploit the land, but also the living condition of farmers. And uh, we are now in the process of building the world, uh, the largest um, an innovation center or maker space in Cambodia, which will open uh, next September, which is the which which is this basically big maker space in Cambodia. But what I want just to finish with is the radioactivity in the ocean is a very very important topic. Actually, these uh, red points are sites of nuclear dumping, and there are places in the ocean that are are quite radioactive because the the tanks that contain the radioactivity have been leaking, and they have been leaking for decades because we used to just to dump radioactive waste in the ocean. And uh, my long-term scientific interest is that we know now that the CO2 emissions and the climate change are highly correlated. Co 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 sorry, uh, what we don't know uh, very much is the correlation of ocean radioactivity and uh, evolution. Uh, the genetic effect uh, of radioactivity on cells and mutations is very poorly understood. And I think uh, understanding radioactivity in the ocean, what Professor Bussler is doing, and what my own father, uh, I mean, stepfather, um, um, father-in-law was doing is basically the study of radioactivity on living tissue and how it goes genetically over generations. I think it's very important. But I think it's a bigger picture is that traditional science has been working in a very siloed way and that is okay and has been okay for like when the world was moving slowly but now we have impending challenges coming onto us we can no longer use the very old science we need to uh, use open science and i think what safecast is doing and has been doing for the last 10 years is the enduring demonstration of the power of open science and how citizens and industry uh, and academia and government can work together and i think this is very important if we want to uh, address those big big challenge so um, I know I shared a lot of reference and it can be a little bit overwhelming. You can scan this tag and it will take you to the to the slideshow. And on the slideshow PDF, you can click on each of these references. If you want to see more, you, you're welcome to, to, uh, to see each of these references. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I really appreciate, you know, three of you, you know, reaching out to different people, different generation, and even going to the ocean. You know, we're all connected and yeah, I wish like we can, you know, see each other more often and so that we can work in, even stronger for the next 10 years of SafeCast. Yes, please. Yeah. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So do you have more comments? I think we're, time is running out soon, but if you have any more comments, you haven't okay. said one, anything. One, one last comment is that sure. actually, you know, we are under still, you know, COVID-19 situation, so we can move, right? We, 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 if, if we, we don't have any COVID-19 issue, we can gather together at the same you know, place, but we, we can. So I think a COVID-19, you know, as I mentioned, as Cesar mentioned, you know, climate changes and crisis, and also you know, nuclear radiation and air quality, whatever. There are so many things, so many you know, issues came from all, all around the world, but it's not, it's not, you know, it's not possible to solve by myself. I mean, we can collaborate because 
I try many things, but China made a lot of pollution. Still, we have an you know, air quality issue. If, if, you know, right? So COVID-19, we, you know, just, you know, just, you know, isolate our country from other side, but still, you know, some, some, you know, issue happen because, you know, other countries still have an patient. We cannot, you know, eternally, long, eternally, you know, the isolate our country. So uh, many issues actually correlate each other. Mm -hmm. So we have to collaborate together. So I, you know, would like to uh, say one, you know, last phrase is like uh, our safe case, you know, movement is come to more environment to, you know, driven, you know, uh, international <laughs> organization. So not only nuclear radiation, we can cover whole, you know, environmental, you know, challenges for people poor planet so we can collaborate so another 10 years another you know couple of decades let's do it together keep moving forward <laughs> yeah i hope we can live long and keep on going <laughs> and tim do you have any comments um yeah i just hoping that because now that i think for the next 10 years i think obviously it's like we get a chance to not just gather radiation data, but air quality data. At the same time, I think um, I think the first 10 years maybe is a demonstration in terms of how citizens can gather data, but more importantly, how we can deploy different types of policies. And also, uh, I think there's a momentum in terms of how at least the Taiwanese government is uh, recognizing mm -hmm. the power of kind of open collective data and how we can use that as a way to uh, uh, influence kind of policy makers i think that's very important mm. yeah yeah i really agree like the part you know open data i mean and you know getting connected with all the other countries and we we should learn from each other especially uh you know being in asia like different asian countries you know we, we feel really like close to each other so yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good start Maybe I'd like to add just a few words as well, is that I I feel that um, that uh, SafeCast maybe doesn't realize how, but it actually I think it's such an important organization and I think the influence it can have in Asia is really powerful. I think a lot of uh, emerging country in Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Thailand, actually they're really craving for this kind of technology mm -hmm. and uh, I think because now the price of this technology is becoming affordable I think it's our, also our job to really reach out to them and establish collaboration with them uh, maybe within university maybe with uh, with the com companies with with the school uh, because now it's really possible I think uh, um, I, I think in the past it would have been difficult but but now I think it's, it's the right time to build a stronger Asian coalition uh, mm -hmm. on this Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, I really, uh, it's a really encouraging message and yeah, I hope that like, we can collaborate even more and continue our activity and spread, you know, like the, our impact all over the world, not only in Asia, but yeah. Yes, yes that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. So thank you very much. And I think we're gonna, okay, okay. So actually, we have 10 more minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the last sentence. <laughs> it looks Look nice. <laughs> Here, we have some makeup on, so let's, uh, we can discuss a little more about our activity. Um, so, so, yeah, we can, do you have any questions to each other and what are our plans, um, you know, our um, collaboration plans? As you as you mentioned, I um, mean, uh, you you mentioned you know like in other country, not only Asia, and I think one of the powerful things that that we could do if we're ever ambitious is to target first the places where there's the most pollution because that's where we could have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of places like uh, Mumbai or Delhi, or I'm thinking in places like Lagos, mm -hmm. um, Mombasa, I'm, I'm thinking about you know, Karachi. I think about those places that, you know, science is nascent and citizen science is like far down the line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, just the same, uh, like they can leapfrog going from no phone to having mobile phone. I think they could, we could leapfrog in the space and to have, you know, very barely in science to having like citizen science and make it, you know, the norm uh, mm -hmm. because that's the best tool that they have available. Uh, and so I'm wondering how we can go about that. And mm -hmm. I'm also thinking like if we are ambitious, 
uh, maybe that's a way that we can get more funding as well for safe casts. This, this, this is my is my line of thinking. If we if we are setting ambitious goals of saying like we're going to do like step by step and you know do air quality first in Japan and then in Taiwan, but if our ambitions say let's go to where we can have the most impact, just like the same spirit as safe cast at the very beginning, uh, this is I think when we can really make a leap for the organization and have an impact. To, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's good that we should be ambitious and like aim for like uh, countries we haven't like reached out solely. And so I'll, I have another question. So what do you see? What what do you foresee the future of Safecast in the next ten years? Okay. Anyone? Okay. So you continue continue to the uh, the previous you know the uh, the discussion for you know another decade for the Safecast. Um, I think a, a first decade of say case is kind of organization to you know overcome and learn about situation, right? But now we have to act more act, proactively, you know, act or you know change or we have to solve this problem. So for for example, um, safe case we have a lot of you know open data you know, gathered from radiation, you know, big eye nano, and there are so many sensors actually, you know, connected to the, uh, in, you know, internet. And uh, we have a lot of data, even if we made uh, another, you know, solar cast or, you know, air, air, you know, note, then probably we can get more data. So um, we have to, you know, do some more data driven movement because, you know, just gathering, just measuring is not enough. Right, so we have to analyze and we have to understand what is you know the uh, the, the you know the solution and how to you know uh, improve more better. So, um, for example, in, in Japan there are you know code for Japan. In Korea we have a code for Korea. There are so many you know organization or you know the um, people. Uh, for science, you know, civic scientists or hackers and also makerspace, uh, probably we have to make an event or probably we have to make a collaboration with them. So uh, bring those data into the, uh, the same spot and then probably we can try to, you know, analyze, understand, you know, and then what, what can you learn from data and then what we can do more about it. And also uh, it is very important because uh, when, in the future, another decade, we have to gather more data from air quality and gas or, you know, temperature, whatever. There are so many environmental factors. And then we have to make a, you know, proper, um, you know, the protocol and, you know, standard because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, we have to, you know, make a you know, protocol uh, in order to understand uh, what we propose, right? So that's why we have to uh, um, understand data we already gathered. So uh, that, is, that is another you know, the, uh, challenge for us because it, it takes a lot of money, energy, and people and time. So I think uh, not only you know, safe case, I mean, we have to open, like open, you know, Cesar mentioned open science, we open our collaboration partners to the you know, other you know, entities. And probably we can try, you know, one by one, then maybe we can do more. Yeah, I agree. Like with the aeronaut launch and we're going to have more data. And I think, you know, having data and also analyze and also be ambitious and try to get involved more and more people is very uh, key for the, you know, safe cast for the next 10 years. Tim, what do you want? You have any yeah, I just. Yeah. I, I I want to echo what as I was also saying earlier. I, I think like of course this like we we wanted to kind of uh, be able to to spread the idea of open data and and I, I think one of the key things I think uh, I hope that we can do more and do better is the localization. So it's it's not just us measuring because I think we're still a very small group and relatively a minority, but more importantly how how to give this these device to the locals yeah so i think that's actually uh that's where the movement can take roots mm -hmm. yeah and, and 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 also the other thing is also um uh um to essentially kind of in some sense besides the the technical and the logic side of things but also like the emotional attachment in terms of like how to make them care about these types of issues mm. yeah. it, it's also quite important in that sense so so 
so yeah, I, I, I think part of besides the the technical side of things, but also like like kind of like the community engagement, yeah, and also uh, 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 how to um, have them from their perspective, how, what are the types of issues that they care about locally, and how we can help them. Mm-hmm. I think that's also something that we can work on yeah. in the future. Yeah, I agree. Like how to make it relevant to more and yes. more people is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Peter is back. Hey guys, good to see hey. you. Welcome to join us. I really appreciate all your 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 you know your support over the years. Without you guys, you know, safe cost, you know, being what it is today wouldn't have been possible. So I just wanted to thank you. It was a great discussion mm-hmm. and uh you know, I know we talk very, very regularly about all the things that we we're doing. Uh, you know, within you know within Asia and globally, etc. So, so a lot of exciting things ahead. I think you also the Airnote has landed, and uh, there will be one landing soon with you as well. So we can all uh, start thinking about how that is going to make a lot of new things possible that so far were much harder to do. So super excited. Uh, to see you all guys together. So we're going to shortly close. We have a few more things lined up uh, here in Tokyo so and in Fukushima. So we're going to uh, continue with that. Uh, but it's been fantastic to, to have you guys with us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Yes. Great. And, uh, and I'll see, I hope to see all of you really soon yeah. uh, yes. in all of this. Yes. And I think before we go to the next musical, uh, you know, uh, act we're going to one thing we wanted to do today which we have not been able to do uh, has been to show some of the drone footage that joe has taken uh, over the years and we're going to want to share that with everybody uh, it's, it's something to get get a real feeling of the scale and size of of, of daiichi it's hard to explain unless you have been physically there i've been there uh you know two three years ago uh, we all visited there and uh, it's the scale is huge it's mm-hmm. it's not like a little power plant you know when you drive through it uh you know you start to realize the power of nature that destroyed it was humongous so and it was it's also always been a reminder to me is, is that if things are bigger than you can imagine that doesn't mean there are forces that can't destroy it so um so i want to leave there uh, and you know anybody want to raise their hands and one more you know one final thing before we go and take off with Joe's drone. I think we're good. You guys are good? Yeah, I think okay. we're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank for, you. For thank you for so you and like we couldn't, you know, spread the word without you guys. So really thank appreciate. You. And Kelsey, um, we're ready to go. Okay, here we go. Counting down drone. <laughs>
that was awesome. <laughs>